with my dad, you know, not having anything or we had to leave everything behind, well, he um, pretty much set foot in America with $5 U.S. dollars in his wallet. Mm. So we had to start from the bottom up. My father knew he needed an education, so he pursued that and he found his way into a vocational school to be an electrician. Going to study to provide um, made me realize I won't have the ability to give back unless I actually have gotten an education and a good career. You know, I guess it inspired me. So I had goals of becoming a doctor, and in my mind, being a doctor and helping patients was giving back to the community, but I ended up in education. In that first semester, I taught middle school life science and physical science, and I hated it. It was not what I thought it would be. All of those kids at the time, I had an acronym for them, and I called them WOW, worst of the worst, and I'm thinking, this is not for me. So every day I, I was banging my head against the wall, like what am I doing, what did I get into? But that's okay, it's paying bills. And so that Friday before winter break, I remember being so excited because I'm like, I'm out of here, I don't have to see these kids for two weeks and I'll, I'll worry about getting through second semester and then just quitting at the end of the year. So that evening I drove out, some guy was veering off from the carpool lane. So he came in and he hit the Honda Civic, both cars hit me from the back. So they rushed me to Huntington Memorial and, and I was in a coma for a few months. So at that time I had, you know, all my friends, all my colleagues uh, come visit. And so one of the teachers who was kind of like my mentor, because she knew I was struggling that first semester, she brought in a bag of letters from the students. And as I was reading through, I mean, hundreds of cards from these kids saying, we miss you, you know, and I'm thinking, how much of an impact could I have made in one semester? But at that moment, I remember sitting in the hospital and looking outside the window and I thought to myself, you know what? God kept me alive so I can continue fulfilling his mission, which is to service the kids. I had started the program and Dr. Daniel Lawson, he was one of the professors for one of the classes. And I thought, oh, I couldn't do this. You know, I can't do this, it's just too much work. And I emailed him, I remember saying, hey, Dr. Lawson, I don't know if I'll get these papers done. I think I'm gonna withdraw, you know, I don't know if this is for me, maybe it's not the right time. And I remember he picked up the phone and he called me. He said, we're, we're not gonna quit on you. You're not gonna quit on yourself. And he said, you, you know, I'll give you time, just get it done. And so at that moment I thought, if he can believe in me, I think I can do it, and so I need to believe in myself. So currently I am the director of an Eastville STEM Academy. We talk about access for all students, so as much as teachers want to say, hey, we need to set GPA limits on any of the kid who wants to apply to STEM, I said no, because sometimes even that 2.0 kid, they're good with tinkering, they're good with building computers. They might not be good in, you know, in their language arts or, or another subject area that that's not their strength, but we have to believe in them, like Dr. Lawson believed in me. We have to believe in these kids. I have this quote and it is, um, you can't be what you can't see. And the reason why I, I feel like I kind of live by that is because unless I had seen my dad go to school, I'm not sure that I would have been able to. So I think the modeling piece and, and just showing students is very important because I've seen the flip side of it when people didn't believe in students, how they just shut down. We have to see the potential in the students and that's what pushes them. That's what will make them, you know, go beyond. I had a, uh, a group of students, they all graduated from high school. I'm still in touch with them. They're now doctors, they're now engineers, you know, working for a big company. So to see them grow up and now to be engineers and to be doctors, to me, that potential, imagine if nobody saw that in them, where would they be? Thank you.